When I was 17, I was in a head-on collision with another driver. I think I was unconscious for a minute or two after the impact. When I came to, I was confused, and I couldn't feel any pain. I couldn't move much, though. Something was pinning me down. A downward glance showed me what was holding me in place. There was a metal rod impaling directly underneath my knee, through what the doctors later told me was my patellar tendon. It had pushed through the tendon, lifted my kneecap, and driven itself up the length of my thigh. It wasn't too deep inside. I could see it bulging underneath my skin. A minute later, I felt everything. I screamed and screamed, thrashing for a bit before realizing any movement only intensified the pain in my knee and thigh. Then, I looked out of the cracked windshield and saw the other driver. His devastated skull sat on his neck like a smashed fruit. I could see his tongue lolling out of his ruined mouth. Without a lower jawbone to hold it in place, it hung down to his Adam's apple. The remaining eye stared, unblinking, at the damage its owner had caused. Another wave of impossibly acute agony surged through me, blurring my vision and forcing me to bite down onto my own teeth until I felt at least one molar crack. Some part of my consciousness registered the fact that I was hyperventilating and worked to calm my breathing. A few moments later, the wave had passed. I then realized no cars had come upon our accident yet. I tried to reach into the back pocket of my shorts for my cell phone, but there was no way the rod in my knee would allow that much movement. In exchange for my attempt, the unbearable pain resumed. Once I regained my senses, I looked again at the remains of the other driver. There wasn't much I could make out. It looked like he had a beard. Hair was puffing out from the skin of what might have been his cheeks. Even though he was the one who caused me all this pain, I felt bad that he was dead. No one deserved to have that happen to them. While I studied the gore with a morbid fascination, the man's neck jerked and sent the fleshy wreckage of his face flopping back and forth. His body jerked again. This time, his shoulders and torso moved as well. I gagged as the movement forced his head downward and bits of his crushed brain oozed from the hole that was once his face. The man continued moving as if he was enduring a terrible seizure. My pain came back. Unable to bear the sensation, I blacked out. It couldn't have been very long, though. When I came to, there was something wrong with the man's body. Something I couldn't understand. The hole where his face had connected to his throat was stuffed with something. It slid out in a thick, wet mass onto the twisted steering wheel and dashboard. From my vantage point, about six feet away, I could only describe it as a worm or possibly a snake. Still, it was unlike either of those things. The body was a grayish white, and a slimy ooze covered the entire length of its body, a length that increased as I watched with growing horror. The return of the pain in my knee was unable to overcome the fear sweeping over me at the sight of this creature. Over ten feet had unfurled from the carcass, and had draped itself along the dashboard. It was lying on surfaces coated with pulverized glass from the windshield, and I could see chunks of it sticking in its body as it moved. The creature didn't seem to mind, though. Once another few feet came out, I saw its tail end finally unlodge itself from the man. The parasite squirmed off the dashboard and onto the crumpled union of the car hoods. A milky slime clung to every surface it touched, and kept the creature connected to the contacted surface by thin strands. It uncoiled completely, and its full length lay wetly on our cars. The smell emanating from its body was thick, and putrid with a revolting, cloying sweetness. I struggled not to retch, not wanting it to hear me.
the pores on its body stopped oozing. An unsettling, peristaltic ripple passed through the thing's body. Horrendous sounds leaked from each pore, and I saw something moving inside of them. With an explosive jolt that caused me to jump in shock, bright red tendrils burst out of its pores. Each one of them was about as thick as a pencil, and every pore contained at least 20 of them. They grew and grew in length, some laying flaccidly on the cars, and some erecting themselves and flopping around like severed electrical cables. I screamed when a couple of the tendrils brushed against me as they grew. But, seconds later, every one of them pushed downward and dragged the main body onto the surface of the road. An 18-wheeler was driving towards us. It screeched to a halt, and I watched an overweight trucker stumble out of the cab and run towards us. First, he looked over and saw the dead man was far beyond help. Then he saw me and my look of pain and terror on my face. He opened his mouth, presumably to say he'd call 911. But suddenly, the tendrils leapt into his mouth and throat before he could get a word out. The trucker grasped the thick cord of tendrils invading him and tried to pull them out. More of them shot out from the creature in the road and wrapped themselves around his form. Over the course of a minute, the main body had been pulled over to the trucker. Gradually, the tendrils retracted from the man's mouth while the body forced itself down his throat. The putrid, oozing fluid again began to leak from the creature as it pushed deeper and deeper inside his mouth. A few moments later, and it was inside him. The man was covered from head to toe with the vile substance, but he no longer looked afraid. He just looked calm. He turned around and walked back to his truck, leaving a trail of slime behind him. I heard the engine start, and the truck drove away. Another vehicle noticed us soon after. The paramedics were called and I was brought to the hospital. I never told anyone what happened. I assume everyone was confused about what the slime was, but I didn't hear them talk about it. All they were concerned about was the wound in my leg, which required two years to recover from. I never saw the parasite or any hint of it again. It was another five years before I had conquered my fear of driving. I've done my best to forget about what I saw. No matter how hard I try though, I still shudder when a truck passes me by and I see the driver through his open window. I know that creature is still in one of them. At least one.